EA Games is best known for its licensed sports games, which include Madden NFL, NBA Live, NHL, PGA Tour, UFC, and the juggernaut of the licensed sports game franchise, FIFA. According to EA, FIFA 17 was the best-selling console title in the world in 2016. EA also owns a stable of successful non-sporting video game franchises, Mass Effect, Need for Speed, Dragon Age, Dead Space, Battlefield, and The Sims. Let's dive into their annual financial report for 2017, which covers 52 weeks ending on March 31st, 2017. Net revenue for EA's fiscal 2017 totaled $4.84 billion, up 10% from $4.39 billion for 2016. 2015's net revenue totaled $4.51 billion, and EA's 2014 net revenue totaled $3.57 billion. EA's net revenue increased 35.5% from 2014 to 2017. Revenue can be broken down between product revenue and service and other revenue. Product revenue totaled $2.64 billion, a 6% increase from 2016, primarily driven by sales of FIFA 17, Battlefield 1, and Star Wars Battlefront. The gains made by these three video game titles were partially offset by sales declines in Dragon Age, The Sims, and the Need for Speed video game franchise. Service and other revenue totaled $2.2 billion, up 16% from 2016, and was primarily driven by FIFA Ultimate, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, and Need for Speed 2015. Gains from these titles were partially offset by declines in sales from The Simpsons Tapped Out, The Sims Free Play, and Battlefield 4 Premium. EA continues by breaking down the composition of its net revenue. Digital goods contributed $2.87 billion towards EA's total net revenue of $4.84 billion. Full game downloads contributed $659 million towards total digital revenues, or 22.93% of total digital revenues. Additional content, or DLC, contributed $1,204 million, or 41.89% of total digital revenues. Subscriptions, advertising, and others contributed $385 million, or 13.4% of total digital revenues. Mobile contributed $626 million, or 21.78% of total digital revenues. It's interesting to note that net revenue from full game downloads increased an astonishing 42% from 2016 to 2017. With internet data caps being more common and enforced, it'll be interesting to see how it affects EA's full game download numbers in the future. Net revenue from physically packaged goods totaled $1,971 million, about a 1% decline from $1,987 million in 2016. However, physically packaged goods contributed significantly more just a few years ago. In 2015, physically packaged goods contributed $2,316 million, a 14.89% decline between the two periods. In contrast, net revenue from digital sales increased 30.69%, from $2,199 million to $2,874 million for the same period. Given the rapid growth in sales from digital goods, EA is devoting more attention and resources to this area. EA recently launched the Origin PC gaming distribution platform that not only allows consumers to purchase EA games directly from EA, cutting out middlemen like Steam, a competing PC gaming distribution platform, but also allows users to sign up for EA's Origin Vault. For a monthly fee, consumers can play a host of EA titles rather than purchasing each title individually. EA doesn't provide numbers for EA's Origin Vault, so it's hard to tell how successful EA Origins and EA Origins Vault really are. EA is less shy about sharing the numbers from its successful FIFA Ultimate Team digital product. 16% or $775 million of EA's total net revenue comes from FIFA Ultimate Teams. Operating income from 2017 totaled $1,224 million, up 36.3% when compared to 2016's operating income of $898 million. However, net income was lower for 2017 when compared to 2016, $967 million versus $1,156 million. EA attributed the decline in net income from 2016 to 2017 to provisions for income taxes. 2016 saw a large $453 million income tax benefit that did not extend to 2017. Now, let's talk about some of the weaknesses of EA's business model as seen by EA's management team. Like most video game companies, and many entertainment companies for that matter, 
EA is very hit dependent for its revenue, meaning that a handful of hit video game titles makes up a majority of its revenue. Just FIFA 17 and FIFA Ultimate Team accounts for approximately a quarter of EA's total revenue. An off year for the FIFA franchise can be devastating to EA. By EA's own admission, a significant portion of our revenue historically has been derived from games and services based on a few popular franchises, and the underperformance of a single major title can have a material adverse impact on our financial results. Now, one of EA's strengths is its stranglehold on officially licensed sports titles, like NFL, NHL, NBA, and of course FIFA. EA titles are usually the only game in town when it comes to licensed sports games with official teams and rosters. However, EA is also at the mercy of major sports leagues and player associations who are the rights holders to EA sports titles. Those rights holders could rescind EA sports license and grant it to another video game company, or they can grant another video game company rights to produce a competing sports title. Either case would have a material impact on EA's bottom line. Consider the fact that the FIFA franchise contributes more than a quarter of EA's total net revenue for 2017. What would happen if the FIFA organization decided to grant 2K Sports a license to produce a competing soccer game, or worse yet, FIFA can grant 2K Sports or some other video game company exclusive video game rights, banishing EA from the soccer video game business altogether. And it's not just sports titles that EA is vulnerable to the whims of license holders. EA also produced non-sporting licensed games including Star Wars Battlefront, which a sequel was recently announced at E3, and the MMO Star Wars Galaxy. Disney could revoke the Star Wars license, preventing EA from making any more games set in the popular Star Wars universe. The theme of EA's strengths also being its weaknesses continues with platform holders like Microsoft and Sony, which EA produces games to sell on. EA sports titles are frequently sold bundled with Microsoft and Sony consoles as part of a package deal. EA notes that direct sales to Sony and Microsoft account for roughly 19% and 17% of total net revenue for 2017. Those special relationships with Microsoft and Sony is at EA's strength. Not many video game companies can convince Microsoft and Sony to pack their video games into Xbox One or PS4 bundles. However, Microsoft and Sony can easily choose other video games from other video game companies to bundle with their consoles. Microsoft and Sony already produced their own video game titles and have included those titles in console bundles in the past. It's not a stretch to imagine Microsoft or Sony using their own video games exclusively as bundled titles with their consoles. Now, to be fair, Microsoft, Sony, and the various license holders for EA sports titles are not entering charitable relationships with EA. These various companies are also benefiting financially from their arrangements with EA, and as long as those relationships are mutually profitable, these companies won't go looking elsewhere. Would FIFA look to risk their IP with an unproven video game company? Or would they stick with EA, the reliable and proven video game company who have paid substantial royalties to FIFA year after year? These annualized sporting titles released by EA have quite a dependable and large following, with many gamers buying their annual release of their favorite sporting titles simply for roster updates. This translates to reliable and predictable profits for EA. The risks of losing licensing rights are more heightened in video game franchises in which EA does not have a long working relationship or successful video game franchise, like EA's UFC titles. Now, as mentioned earlier, EA and most video game companies have a hit-based business model, meaning that a substantial portion of their income comes from just a few hit video game franchises. One misstep on a video game title that they banked on and put a lot of financial resources in can be materially damaging to the company. One recently released video game title that has underperformed, at least critically and by many fans, was a follow-up to the popular Mass Effect trilogy, Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda was a highly anticipated video game title in the successful Mass Effect video game franchise. But Mass Effect Andromeda seemed to have fallen flat to critics and fans alike. Andromeda's facial animation has been widely ridiculed on social media. It's to be seen that Mass Effect Andromeda is a financial failure. The title was released on March 21, 2017, and no sales numbers were released in EA's annual financial report. Video game site Kotaku, citing four sources, has reported that EA has shifted resources out of the Mass Effect franchise and a follow-up to Mass Effect Andromeda or a video game set in the Mass Effect universe isn't forthcoming in the near future. This isn't the first time that a video game misstep has tarnished or potentially sunken an entire video game franchise. EA's 2013's release of SimCity was so poorly received that EA hasn't released a follow-up since, and it may have destroyed the franchise. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into EA's financial report. 
please consider liking and subscribing to the Strange World of Econ channel. It's a great free way to support the channel so that I can bring you more great content. Till next time.